Well, hey everybody, Monty back, and I thought I wasn't going to keep recording, but you know what I realized is I was going to go ahead and just make this video on how to record videos, but I'm going to go ahead and use that as the example of how to, how at least I edit videos. I use Movie Studio Platinum 12.0. There's some new ones. Uh, I should probably be using Windows Movie Maker because uh, it's free, uh, but I don't, I haven't used it for so long, I'd probably be stumbling around. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just, hey, record this. If you guys like it, you'll like it, and it might help out. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my project. Uh, I just open this fresh with nothing on here. I just go project open. Uh, I go to my E drive, but this isn't what I wanna do first. I go to my videos, and then I open up my handy dandy intro video that I've had so many people help me out with my page and stuff like that. I'm just not that great at my Photoshop and things like that. So shout out, Comical Plays, all you guys helping me out with these types of intros. So I just double click on it, boom. It adds it in. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, zoom in. There's a lot of stuff here, definitely. Movie Studio Platinum takes a little bit of time. I started very basic on how do I add videos and then render it. And then I started working with weird special effects and you just, it's just a hobby. So I keep learning more and more as we go. So we opened up my little intro video. Now I wanna to go to the E drive and I wanna open up that brand new video that we just made. Uh, what it was called was the final uh, bandy cam because I was actually using that to record, not the new video, which was our test during the video. So let's go ahead and open up this bandy cam file. Here is the inside look of why I use bandy cam. You'll notice that I have the game or not game in this case, but background audio on one line, but then I have my actual audio track of my microphone on another track. That way I can up my audio for say my actual voice recording and maybe lower my game audio. It just basically means if, if I didn't balance the settings properly like I used to have to do with my voice and the audio and things like that, it gets a little bit more complicated to deal with that. So this gives me that post editing opportunity to fix things. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna be quiet for a second. I'm gonna click at the beginning because I can zoom in with the mouse wheel here and let's just see how this sounds. Change the volume here, raise it back up. Hey everybody, Monty here and... All right, so you see how what I like to do when I press record is I wait a little bit, let the video catch up, and then I start my intro. So we'll test that again. Hey everybody, Monty Say, here. Just like that. And the reason why I do that is then I can click in here a little bit closer and I can edit that out. I'm just gonna go ahead and click right here. I'm gonna, I've learned the hotkeys. S is split. So it adds a nice split right down the middle. I can just click on this section here, hit the delete key and it gets rid of that whole section. I can just drag this over. And what I like to do is zoom in here, just mouse wheel right where I want and kind of scroll these over each other. If not, let's take a look. This is what it's going to look like. Hey everybody, it's Monty very here, and boom. today I want to talk about very quick. We don't want that. I want a nice transition. So let's try this again. Hey everybody, Monty here. Just and like that. Today I want to talk about So that's pretty nice. It shows that it's a, you know, I like to do my 1 seconds pretty much straight up on these little transitions. Um, and that's how I get that video connected here then I can do all kinds of cool stuff. I wish I could find me going like uh, like that, where I go um, or uh, or that. So let me find something in this uh, video. I started out trying ah, to do right everything here. for free. Uh, I started out trying to do everything for free. Notice how I went, uh, I started out. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in more on this audio track right here and hit play again with spacebar. Uh, I started out trying to do everything for free on a... Uh, all right, see, I started trying out everything for free. What I'm gonna do is I can tell that uh, is this little track right here. So I could go split, split, click in the middle, remove, join these together. Now let's check it out, about a year now. I started out trying to do everything for free. You didn't even know I did it. It looked clean, it was nice. As long as you're not cutting big chunks, you can cut those ums out and all that stuff, no problem at all. And I'm a big ummer, so that's why I'm not such a big live streamer. I'm more of a, I need some post editing work to make my stuff watchable. And things like that. But if you're just looking to record a game, you already have a decent. So cool. I think the audio levels sound pretty good. If it gets too loud, you're going to see your master level here. These things are going to turn red. 
Uh, so always try to balance it. Also, a tip that I use, uh, if to make your audio levels proper here, you might have your actual volume set wrong. So you're gonna make a video with your volume settings. Make sure you go online or play some music or play someone else's video that knows how to actually do their audio. But I would actually say do something official. I go to like a Pandora or a music site, max out the volume. I know what that high volume level is for my volume setting and then I come in and edit my videos. I think it's really important to just know where your volume settings are and everything like that. Uh, if not, it's going to be too loud or you'll notice it right on this master here. Like if I restart this, originally, originally, you can barely hear me, right? So I had to change my audio setting here and I'm going to crank this music, which is my audio level here for probably about a year now. See, I started out trying to do everything for free on a... On so that's why those audio levels help. Now, if I had my volume turned way down, then I wouldn't notice what's the proper audio level there. Uh, so there's a lot of things to play around out with the audit editing software, but there's so much cool stuff. I can, you can just drag stuff onto here. Like I can just drag a picture from my desktop and place it right on top. There's a fallout picture. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in right here and I'm going to play the video. Record video games like I've been doing and then for watch. probably about a year now. Boom. I started the picture out pops trying up. to do everything for free. On a so it takes the hierarchy of the, this image is on top of this video. So this image is going to be over prioritizing this video down below. That's why you only see the screenshot. Now, here's some quick tips to fix that. You can click this top bar down here and change the opacity <laughs> and lower this, let's say to 50%. Now, when I look at here, you can kind of see that that image is only 50% showing and then you see the other video in the background. Uh, something else, what I like to do are fades. So you click these corners, a fade offset in and a fade offset back. And then what you do is you go back here and hit play. Probably about a year now. It'll I fade in. Out trying to do everything for free on a on a little shoe. And then the budget, image fades right? out. Yeah, I got free. I should mute my. I'm gonna mute this line right now. So now you won't hear my voice in the video. It's just gonna be that background. See, you actually can hear that I've city skylines running in the background because that music is playing. You can see it down on that desktop down below. So I don't know. Quick basic overview. I figured, hey, while I'm editing and talking about the OBS video, I might as well talk about how I edit my videos because I've been saying I'm gonna do this for a while. Again, this was definitely not a how to use Movie Studio Platinum. It's more of just quick things that I like to use. If you'd like some more detailed videos, at least of what I do, I can show that as well. Um, a quick tip, one thing that I learned that was really cool, if you wanna make time warp videos and you're doing something like this, let's pause this. If you go to the end, this, just dragging it, what it's doing is it's cutting the video like in half. But what happens if I hit control? Now, if I hit control, notice that the little slot, it goes from that normal look here. I can't really zoom in on that. This, my little mouse, which is the little hand right there. Now you see that it's trim event end. If I hit control, it gets a little squiggle line. I can click on the edge and then just drag this in and notice how this is zigzags. Ah, because what's happening is, is I'm compressing that video down and now it's going to go really, really fast. So you'll see when I'm playing, look at my me on the webcam. Or for fun, let's hear what I sound like. So that's what I do for my time warp videos. It was a really cool thing that I learned. You smash your video in first, then you add audio. So your audio is not scratched up and all warped. Uh, and you got a nice clean video. So cool stuff. I hope this helps a little bit or at least gives you guys some insight onto what I've been doing and how I get videos pushed out. All right, one thing I wanna let you guys know of before I head out, once you have the video all finished up and kind of how you like it, you gotta go up to project and you gotta render it. I mean, that's gonna be the big deal, render as. Now, I have favorites because I have a 30 frame per second favorite and a 60 frame per second favorite. These are custom templates. Uh, I found what works best. Um, Here's how I found them, just so you guys know where to look for them. You're going to want a, an MP4 file. Uh, so there's all kinds of choices here. Uh, what I was just doing was the Sony Internet uh, 920 1080 with the 30p. Um, but there's so many different choices if you want to make a Blu-ray or if you want to do things like that. So let's look at my 30. I've got a video format of AVC. I've got it's high definition. It's going to be 1080p. It's going to be a high profile whatever this coding is, K-back. 
Uh, frame rate, 30. Now, what you want to be careful of here is normally DVDs, I think it's DVDs and other things, play at a 29.97 frames per second, not a true 30 frames per second. So if you are recording at 30 frames per second, I suggest don't go with this one. You can actually go to your frame rate and change it to 30. You want to render at the same frame rate as you record, right? So you don't want any little offsets or blurriness. Uh, so that's basically it for that. I've got no progressive scan, anything like that. I'm still playing around with all these uh, formats. I found what worked and then I just favorited it and I was done with it. I don't go back here. So I only show my favorites and I just know I go to one or the other. I click render and boom, it's gonna spit out an MP4. I upload that file directly to YouTube. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.